Hey, what's up class? Welcome back. Another episode of Math One Distance Learning from room 1809, John Glenn High School. All right, so we have been working on inequalities. And the last lesson that I did was, I called it inequalities part one. Um, today, we're gonna be looking at inequalities part two. So you should have these notes in front of you. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna flip over to my DocuCam. Okay, so in our uh, lesson for today, our objective is similar to our last lesson, but in this objective, we wanna be able to define the concept of an inequality as compared to an equation. So we wanna be able to compare inequalities to equations. We wanna be able to identify similarities and differences. And then today we're gonna to be working on interpreting and solving multi-step one variable inequalities. So one variable means there's only one variable like an X variable. Now it might be on both sides of the inequality, but there's only one variable. We don't have an X and a Y or an X and a Z. It's just one variable. Okay, so it's our objective for this lesson. All right, so let's do a little review here. Um, last lesson, we talked about what an inequality is and what it's not. So in an inequality, um, this is a statement of two values or quantities or amounts that are not equal, right? So it is a math statement um, that two values or amounts are not equal. And um, what that means is that one amount is larger and one amount is smaller, okay? Now, when we talk about solutions of an inequality, we talked about this in our last lesson as well, um, a solution of an inequality is any value, any value that makes the inequality true. So remember in inequalities, often we can have many solutions. There's many possible solutions, many possible answers. So I'll give you a couple examples here. So um, in uh, number four here, so we know that this is an inequality. And think for a minute, how would we know that this is an inequality? How do we know that this is not an equation? Okay, some of you may have thought of it. Um, the reason we know it's an inequality is because we can see this balance scale is not balanced. What this is telling us is that this side is heavier than this side. And therefore we know that one amount is larger and one amount is smaller. So if it was an equation, then it wouldn't be unbalanced, it would be balanced, right? The pencil would be balanced. So this is unbalanced and so we know it's an inequality. So now let's go ahead and write this algebraically. So we've got one, two, three, so three nuggets and then two pounds of weight, two pounds of weight. And we know that this side is greater, it's greater than because it's heavier. The, the balance scale is tilted down. So we know this side is heavier, so it's greater. And then over here we have two nuggets and six pounds. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just solve this. We're gonna use um, our standard equation steps. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to subtract two, six is, there's more weight over here. So I'm gonna subtract two. That'd be like canceling off or taking off two pounds off of both sides. So I'm gonna subtract two and that's gonna give me six minus two is four. And now I'm gonna go ahead and remove two nuggets from both sides. So I'm gonna take those two nuggets off. If I canceled those, I would take two nuggets off of the left side. So that's what I'm doing algebraically. So these get canceled out and three nuggets take away two nuggets. If I took two nuggets away, I'd be left with just one nugget. And so what this is telling us is we don't know the exact weight of the nugget of these nuggets, but we know for this to be a true statement, 
for the left side to be heavier than the right side, we know that this has to be larger than four. So for possible solutions down below here, we would say any value that is greater than four pounds, right? So for example, it could be five pounds, it could be six pounds, it could be seven pounds. So this variable, it can be any solution, any value that's greater than four. But watch what happens if we were to do something that was smaller than four. For example, if I was to put one, if I was to put one, if each of these was one pound. So let's see, this would be two. And then if that's one, three, four, five. So this is five pounds. And over here, if these were each one pound, that would be six, seven, eight. So this would be eight. And over here would be five. So it would not be tilted down to the left. This would actually be lighter if these were each one pound each, right? So it would be a false statement. It would actually be tilted the other way. All right, so we know that our answer, our possible solutions are anything that's greater than four pounds. It could be five, six, seven, 10, it could be 10,000 pounds, anything that's greater than four. All right, let's go ahead and look at um, another example here. Let's look at number six. So on number six, um, my variable is here. So I wanna isolate the variable. So the first thing I'm gonna do is subtract five from both sides. So these are going to cancel. 25 take away five is 20. So now I have 20 is less than two X. I wanna isolate my variable. I'm following standard equation solving rules. And so I'm gonna do the inverse operation. I'm gonna divide by two. 20 divided by two is 10. So now what this is telling us is that whatever X is, it has to be a number greater than 10. We could flip this around. I could put the variable here, but if I move my variable here, I have to change my symbol. I have to change my inequality symbol because right now the arrow is pointing at 10. And I need to make sure that that arrow is pointing at 10. And this says X is greater than 10. So what are some possible solutions? Possible solutions are any value that is greater than 10. So what are some values that are greater than 10? Well, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 30, 50, 1,000, right? So anything that's greater than 10, all right? So any value that's greater than 10, all right? So um, just a quick review here. When we're solving inequalities, we know that there are many possible solutions, okay? All right, I'm gonna to go to the next page of the notes. Okay, so now when we're solving inequalities, sometimes we have to reverse the inequality symbol. So sometimes we're gonna to have to reverse the symbol. So when do we do that? Well, when the constant value, right? That's a number without a variable. So when the constant value, when the constant value has its sign changed from positive to negative, okay? So when the number, the value that doesn't have a variable, when it has its sign changed from positive to negative or vice versa, then we have to reverse the inequality symbol. Now I'll give you an example here in a moment, okay? So when we go from a positive to a negative, when that constant gets changed, then we have to reverse the inequality symbol, okay? Now, when, when would that happen? When would, when would the number, this value, get changed from positive to negative or vice versa? Well, that happens, the constant value will have its sign, right? If it's positive or negative, it'll have it changed when you multiply or divide by a negative number. So when you multiply or divide by a negative number, then the constant is changed, which means then we have to reverse the symbol, okay? So let's do uh, some examples of that. So on number 10 here, okay, on number 10, so I wanna isolate the variable. It's right here next to a negative two. 
So the first thing I want to do is get rid of seven. So I'm going to subtract seven. I'm going to do the inverse operation, subtract seven from both sides. 21 minus seven is going to be 14. Okay. Now I want to isolate my variable. So I need to divide by negative two. So I'm going to divide by negative and I'm going to divide by negative two. Now, this is my constant. There's no variable next to it. Right now it's positive. But as soon as I divide, as soon as I divide by negative, right? That's what we just said here in rule nine, right? When we divide by a negative, now that's going from a positive value and now it's gonna become negative. So I have to reverse my symbol. I have to reverse the symbol. Okay, so it, whenever we take that constant and it's a positive and then it gets changed to a negative or vice versa, we have to reverse our symbol. So this would be X is greater than or equal to negative seven, okay? And then possible solutions would be anything that is greater than negative seven. So for example, negative six is actually greater. Even though it's a negative, it's greater. Negative five is greater, zero, one, two, right? So this is a, a low negative. So anything that's closer to zero Right, and then positives, those are all possible solutions. Okay, so anything greater or equal to negative seven. Negative seven is actually a solution. I should have put that right here. Um, I'll insert that right there. So this actually should have a negative seven as well because it could be equal, okay? All right, let's look at uh, number 12. So on number 12, um, we have to start off, we have a distributive property. I call this uh, a boom chicka boom. And I wanna just pause for a moment. Some of you might be wondering where the heck did you get a boom chicka boom? So it came from uh, this song. So I'm gonna play this song really quickly. I said a boom chicka boom. 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 I said a boom chicka rocket chicka rocket chicka boom. I said Okay, so that's a song you can look up um, on your own if you want, but that's where I got the boom chicka boom. Okay, so we got to go a boom and then a chicka boom right there, a boom chicka boom. Okay, so I'm going to go four times x is going to give me four x, four times one is going to give me four, and then I'm just going to drop that down so it's going to look just like that. Okay, now hopefully you are. Uh, recognizing hopefully there's a little alarm going off in your head saying hey this side the left side kind of looks pretty similar to this side in fact hopefully you're noticing that there's a 4x here and a 4x here so let's go ahead and subtract 4x from both sides so if we subtract 4x from both sides these get canceled and these get canceled also so we're left with 4 is less than or equal to two. Now, is this a true statement? Is four cookies less than or equal to two cookies? Is $4 less than or equal to $2? Well, we know that that's false, right? That's a false statement. So since we have a false statement and our variables got canceled, there are no more X values, the X values got canceled out. So then what's our answer going to be? Our answer is going to be no possible solutions, right? There are no solutions, no solutions, nothing will work. Okay, so no possible solutions. It's a no solution problem because we got a false statement. All right, a false statement. Okay, um, now you have some word problems in this assignment also. So let's go ahead and look at two examples and then you will have some homework problems. So let's go ahead and look at this word problem right here, um, number 14. Okay, so it says the temperature rose 12 degrees, but it was still less than 70 degrees outside. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to write an inequality. We need to translate, we need to interpret this into an algebraic inequality, and then we need to solve it. So it says the temperature, well, that's our unknown value. We don't know what the temperature was, okay? It just says the temperature 
rows 12 degrees. So rows, is that an add, subtract, multiply, or divide? And that would be an add. So we want an unknown value plus 12 is still less than, is less than 70 degrees outside. So it'd look like that. So we have an unknown amount, an unknown temperature. It rose 12 and it was still less than, this left side is still less than 70 degrees. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve. And when we solve this, I'm gonna subtract 12 from both sides, 70 minus 12 is 58. So X is less than 58. So now let's interpret this. What does this really mean? Well, what this really means is that whatever value, whatever temperature we're talking about, it had to be less than 58 degrees to start, right? So the starting temperature, whatever it was, we don't know, but we know the starting temperature was less than 58 degrees to begin with. Okay, so whatever the temperature was, it rose 12, but to start, it had to be less than 58 because it ended less than 70. Okay, so what would be some examples? It could be 57 degrees, it could be 56 degrees, it could be 55 degrees, right? So anything that's less than 58, okay? All right, one more example problem. Okay, number 15 here. I doubled my son's allowance. So it doesn't tell us what the allowance was. So that's our unknown value. I doubled my son's allowance. And even after I took $6 away, his total was still more than $24. Okay, so we don't know what the allowance was, but we know we doubled it. So I doubled the allowance and then I took $6 away and it was still more than, right? Is more than, is greater than 24. Okay, so now we're gonna just solve this with, this is a two-step inequality. We're gonna add six to both sides. That's gonna give me two X is greater than 30. And I'm gonna divide by two. And that's gonna give me X is greater than 15. So now we need to interpret this. So X is greater than 15. Let's go back to the problem. X represents the allowance. So that means the starting amount, the starting allowance was greater than $15. So whatever it was up here, we know that it had to be greater than 15 to make this a true statement. So it could have been $16, it could have been $17, $18, $20. We just know that that number had to be greater than 15. Okay, all right. So now you're the last page of these notes you're doing on your own. And let me just pull it up really quickly. So you have two word problems. Okay, so on number 16, it says, uh, it's a word problem about gift baskets. It says, write and solve an inequality to determine how many more baskets Allie must sell um, for a fundraiser. And then over here on number 17, um, it says six is less than or equal to the sum of four and negative two X. So you're just gonna translate that into an algebraic inequality is less than or equal to Okay, and then go ahead and solve that. And then on the next uh, row of problems, you've got um, just some problems that look like this. Okay, so these are not word problems. You have four just regular algebraic problems. So you'll go ahead and solve those four, um, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Okay, so those, uh, finish up those problems, go back and look at the notes, rewind the video, pause the video, and um, you should be uh, good. Okay, so this is part two of inequalities. And then our next lesson, we're gonna 
um, look at how we actually graph these inequalities on a number line. So I've got some um, creative strategies to help you with that. Okay. All right. You guys uh, have a good day and I will see you next class. Bye.